Right now I'm on the campus of Cornell University and a visit to Ithaca, New York is the, uh, the easiest way to see the variety within the Ivy League. Uh, there are eight universities within the, uh, within the Ivy League and the only thing that really unites them is the fact that they pay, play sports against one another. Um, there are some academic similarities in terms of the competitiveness of these schools, but um, in terms of the undergraduate experience, uh, there, there is a huge uh, breadth of, of experience that a student might have. At Dartmouth, for example, with only 4,000 undergraduates versus Cornell with 14, over 14,000 undergraduates, it's a huge research university, um, it, a beautiful campus, but uh, much more eclectic, much more a mix of uh, old buildings and, and traditional architecture with very modern square buildings. The other thing to keep in mind is that this really is a university um, with big graduate programs. It's also a, a university that allows you to not only major in the liberal arts like at Princeton or at Dartmouth or at Yale, which is the only thing that you can major in as an undergraduate. Here at, at Cornell there are, is a school of architecture and art and planning, there is an engineering school, there is the hotel management school, uh, there is the uh, human ecology or something, I forget exactly what they call it, the human ecology school, um, and the labor relations school. All of these are professional tracks for an undergraduate that are quite apart from the traditional liberal arts where you may, might major in sociology, biology, chemistry, uh, classics, English literature, etc. So uh, this is an Ivy League that one of the Ivy Leagues uh, that is more similar to University of Pennsylvania than it is to say Princeton. That doesn't mean that it's bad, that doesn't mean that it's good. I think that it's important to remember that the Ivy League, while it does denote a certain amount of competitiveness on the part uh, in the admissions process, that these institutions are quite different in their structure, in, in the organization of the curriculum, and in the, the offerings, the academic offerings that you could pursue here. So uh, don't be fooled by the title or the label of Ivy League. Remind yourself that it's important to decide, do you want a great big university like this with 14, 15,000 undergraduates, or do you want something more uh, compact and more of a residential community like a Dartmouth, a Yale, or Princeton. And on that residential piece, only 55% of undergraduates live on campus at Cornell, whereas virtually everyone at Dartmouth lives on campus. So again, you have this variety. You need to think about what's important to you and then choose the school that matches your preferences. Don't just pick the label Ivy League. Pick the school that suits you the best.